From mid-January to the end of February of 2024, we took another of our snowbird adventures to escape the Ohio winter. This time we headed to Florida for warmth and sunshine. We spent 50 nights away from home, including 43 nights tent camping in Florida state parks. The seven campgrounds we visited gave us lasting memories and some thoughts we'd like to share. First, we'll walk through the glamping setup we used on this trip. Then we'll review our experiences at Rainbow Springs, Tomoka, Long Key, Kissimmee Prairie, Mayaka River, Gamble Rogers, and Fort Clinch. We're setting up the Jolka so we can take showers without making people wait. This will be a learning experience. for us. Do you have some water to put in? Chicken. Okay, so quick tour of our camp. Set up. Lexi set up with the vestibule. We got all that done in about an hour. We did set up the jewel co. We have a couple new features so we're excited to try that tonight the heater uh, that we bought is propane and it's got a thermostat on the inside i'll show in a few minutes uh, that's worked really well uh, mishka's working her magic in the camp kitchen okay so this is our vestibule setup it's been very nice to sit and eat and then here's our bedroom setup we have the heater vent coming in and there's a thermostat and then everything else is pretty much the same as we always have it set up that's our tour <laughs> you, you look very busy. <laughs> we spent eight nights at the Rainbow Springs State Park campground in Dunlon and really enjoyed the site and the facilities. The park has two camp loops, each with their own bathhouse and laundry facilities. The restrooms were cleaned multiple times every day. Overall, these facilities were typical for Florida State Parks and the staff kept them quite clean. The park building included the camp registration desk, a display of the park's history, and a camp store. The park rangers and volunteers were all very friendly and helpful. There were quite a few things to do within the campground, including kayaking and hiking. Outside the campground, but within the park, were other options to go tubing on the Rainbow River, swim in the Headspring area, explore the old zoo and animal That's exhibit right, areas, right. and do longer hikes. We used this site as a base from which we made lots of trips outside the park. Within an easy drive are many other interesting sites to visit, including Silver Springs, Homosassa Springs, and Three Sister Springs. The facilities were clean and convenient. We'd rank them a four out of five with a point off due to the limited restroom access on our loop. Come here, look over my shoulder, John. The park had lots of activities available, but we'd give it a three of five because of the different parts of the park requiring driving or taking a shuttle during the peak season. The area has lots to do within an easy drive of the park, so we'd give the outside activity category a five out of five. We had a very nice experience at Tomoka State Park in Ormond Beach, where we stayed for six nights. The sites were large and most were nicely protected by large trees, offering lots of shade. Our site was a short walk from the bathhouse, which offered multiple showers, toilet stalls, a washer dryer, and a dish cleaning sink. The campsites are arranged in a single large loop with two cut throughs. Each mini loop has a dedicated bathhouse. The facilities were cleaned multiple times each day. Yeah, the Tomoka Outpost is the highly recommended camp store. Highly recommended from Dave and Sue Travels. If you haven't caught them yet on YouTube, definitely check them out. We'll put the link in the comments below. <laughs> Anytime I can get Mishka laughing, it's a win. You're too much. <laughs> I am a little bit too much. She's right. There were a number of highlighted activities to keep people busy inside the park. We had heard that the Tomoka Outpost was one of the best camp stores in the Florida park systems. So we hiked a few miles to visit and grab a snack.
The outpost offers boat rentals, fishing, and camping supplies, picnic areas, and of course concessions. We can confirm that this is the best camp store we've seen so far. Our hike continued beyond the outpost to the historic recreation of the Tomoko village known as Nokoroko. Tomoko is near Highway A1A along the Atlantic Ocean, so there are tons of things to see and do within an hour's drive of the park. We again made lots of trips during our time here. The key to Tomoka is the amazing volunteer program supporting the park. The facilities and campsites were cleaned continuously and looked great. We give that a 5 out of 5. The in-park activities were numerous, fun, and well-managed. Again, <laughs> 5 out of 5. The nearby activities were good, but some suffered from being too touristy and crowded. Maybe a 4 out of 5 there. Long Key State Park historically has two campgrounds, one primitive and the other more full service. Unfortunately, the full service campground has been closed due to hurricane and tidal flooding damage. We grabbed one of the hard to get primitive sites along the beach. These sites are over a quarter mile from the parking lot over a boardwalk and stretch of beach. The restrooms and showers are next to the parking lot. We lugged our glamping set up this distance and between us totaled over 10 miles of walking back and forth just to set up. It was the same when we packed up five nights later. The view from our site was gorgeous, including the night sky. The staff for the park was great as well. We did face challenges with noceums, rats, and long late night bathroom runs. The showers were not hot and open to the elements, so some nights were uncomfortable. We did use our Julka hot tap one night and that was fun. There was a nature trail in the park but a bridge was closed, making it an out and back instead of a loop trail. It was very pretty and we enjoyed the views on this hike. In the past there were boat rentals and other activities, but all those were shut down during our visit. We also got quite a bit of rain and wind while staying here, so we had to find nearby activities outside of the park. Being in the Keys, we could easily get to lots of attractions within an hour either direction. We did get down to Key West on a sunny day, but found the crowds overwhelming. Ultimately, we found some great spots that served as highlights for us on this trip, including the Dolphin Research Center, Aquatic Encounters, and the Marathon Public Library. The campsites were nice, but not as well maintained as other Florida State Parks. Our site was fine, but we saw remnants from previous campers left in sites that new campers were moving into the next day. We also felt that the showers not having hot water was a problem. We'd give the sites and facilities a 2 out of 5. Due to so much being shut down, there were not a lot of options for spending time inside the park. Really, it was just a hiking path and birding opportunities. We'd give the in-park activities a 3 out of 5. Outside the park, there was plenty to do within an hour's drive, but it was heavily targeted to tourists, so we'd give this a 3 out of 5 as well. For us, we spent seven nights at the astronomy campground in Kissimmee Prairie for the express intention of doing a lot of astrophotography in this dark sky site. The campsites were large and well maintained and each of these five sites included an observation pad with separate power and water independent of the campsite. Kissimmee Prairie has two other campgrounds in addition to the astronomy sites, a family campground and an equestrian or glamping site with yurts. The astronomy camp was about an eighth of a mile from the restrooms at the park office and about a quarter mile from the showers at the FAMA camp. The facilities were cleaned often and seemed to be very well maintained. There are a lot of hiking paths, including a section of the Florida Trail within the park. Otherwise, this park is mostly about specialty interests. For us, that meant astrophotography. For others, that meant horseback riding or hiking. This park is quite a bit out of the way, so there was not much to do within an hour's drive but we were here to capture images of the night sky and we were not disappointed. Facilities and campsites were good, if a bit far away from each other. So we're giving that a four out of five. In-park activities were perfect for us, so five out of five. And nearby activities were virtually non-existent, so one out of five for this category. We spent five nights in Mayaka River State Park near Sarasota. We caught a bad break here as we had three solid days of rain. Our arrival day and our departure day were sunny, but otherwise it was overcast and wet. The campground was known to flood during the rainy season, so we were a bit nervous. Unfortunately, the park was also experiencing issues with the water system, so there was no portable water available in camp. They provided free jugs of water for campers, but this proved to be more than a little inconvenient during our stay. That said, the campsites were large and well-maintained. Again, volunteers are the key to this park. We used the laundry facilities and were very happy with them. We had no issues with the restrooms or showers, which were just a short walk from our campsite. Within the park, there appears to be a ton of things to do and places to explore. 
We only had one day available to explore within the park due to weather. We went on a tram tour and on our way out stopped by the Canopy Trail and the Visitor Center. All these activities were interesting and fun. We did quite a bit of exploring outside the park as a result of the weather. We were close to Sarasota and so we spent time exploring the Ringling Museum, DeSoto National Monument, and quite a few restaurants and malls nearby. Hi, how are you? Welcome to my Africa. Thank you. Where are you from? Ohio. What part? Uh, Columbus. Columbus, okay. Yeah. I'm near, I live in Northern Kentucky. Campsites and facilities get a 2 of 5, mainly due to the lack of potable water. In-park activities get a 4 out of 5, even though we could not experience many of the things we planned to due to the rain. Out-of-park activities get a 3 out of 5. There's lots to do, but it is all in a more urban area. We spent seven nights at Gamble Rogers Memorial State Park in Flagler Beach. We had a good time here. Campsites were all pretty large, and half of them on the ocean side were perched above the beach for an amazing view of the Atlantic. The facilities offered plenty of showers and toilets, as well as a washer dryer and a sink for washing dishes. Everything was well maintained and cleaned frequently by the volunteers and camp hosts. There are a few paths to hike within the park, and obviously there's a long beach to enjoy all day, if that's your thing. We also saw a rocket launch from the beach. We were close enough to do that. Beyond those things, however, the park is designed as more of a home base, allowing campers to go to the many nearby attractions. This would be what people might refer to as a hammock. This is a shade. This park straddles Highway A1A, so all the attractions available up and down the Atlantic coast become available. It was a little over an hour's drive to get to St. Augustine, for example. We did lots of road trips from this campsite and enjoyed the area quite a bit. <laughs> so strange. Okay, this is what they were talking about. We loved the campsite and the facilities here, so we gave that a 5 out of 5. We enjoyed the beach and the nature trail walk, but that's about all there is to do in the park, so we gave that a 4 out of 5. Outside the park, there is plenty to do. Although a lot of it is targeted to tourists, there are still plenty of things to do off the beaten path, so we gave that a 4 out of 5 as well. Our last stay was at Fort Clinch State Park in Fernandino Beach. We spent five nights on the Amelia River side of the campground. Last year, we spent two nights on the Atlantic Beach side. The Riverside sites were covered and shady. We were also warned that our site was prone to flooding in the heavy rain. The sites were cleaned in between the campers and the bathhouses were cleaned multiple times each day by the hosts and volunteers. The bathhouses offered multiple washers and dryers, a number of showers and toilets, and sinks for washing down. dishes. The park holds Fort Clinch, a masonry fort from the pre-Civil War period that offers tours for visitors. In addition, the park is filled with hiking trails and beach areas. Oh, the lighthouse, got it. There is a lot to do in the town of Fernandina Beach, which is about a 10 minute drive away from the park entrance. Within an hour's drive, there are lots of interesting sites and activities to check out. We enjoyed visits to Fort Caroline and the Tamaquin Ecological Preserve.
The sites and facilities were very good, but the shade trees on the riverside are a blessing and a curse for space, so we're ranking that a 4 out of 5. The in-park activities are numerous and fun. We feel a 5 out of 5 is appropriate for this category. The nearby activities are also good and not too touristy, so a 5 out of 5 here too. We wanted to explore Florida for the winter. We found some activities and sites that we love and can't wait to experience again in the future. We also realized that some aspects of Florida that appeal to many do not appeal to us. A reoccurring theme we found and sincerely appreciate was the impact of volunteers on the Florida state parks. Yeah, we were continually impressed at the consistent quality and care given to these parks across the state, and we learned that the local volunteer organizations have everything to do with that experience. Yeah, a big thank you to all Florida State Park volunteers, camp hosts, and rangers for all that you do to take care of these magical resources.